Look, you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will. With duty and desire we follow thee. How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? Thou chance the roses there have fade so fast? We like for want of rain, which I could well retain them from the tempest in my eyes. Ah, me, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history. The course of true love never did run smooth. But either it was different in blood or... Oh, cross, too high to be thought of low. Or else misgrave in respect of years. Oh, spite, too old to be engaged to young. Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Mm. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands in the edict and destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience, as it is a customary course, as due to love, as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancies follow us. A, a good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow art, a dowager, of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house, remote in seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, will I marry thee. And to that place a sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and to that place a a league without the town where I did meet thee once with um, a Helena to do observance to a morn of May. There I will wait for thee. Oh, oh my good Lysander, I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest foe, by all the vows that ever men have broke, in number more than ever women spoke, in that same place that thou hast pointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. Oh, Godspeed, fair Helena, with your way. Call me you fair and fair again, unsafe. Demetrius loves you fair. Oh, happy fair. Oh, teach me with what look and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. That your frowns would teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. My prayer should such affections move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hates me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine, none but your beauty. Would that fault be mine? Take comfort, he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Helena, to our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow, when Phoebe doth behold a silver sarge in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearl on a bladed brass, a time that lover's flight doth conceal, from Athens gate have we devised to steal. And in the wood, where often you and I upon fake primrose beds were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet K fellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee, thy Demetrius. Keep word, my son, that we must starve our sight from the lover's food. Tomorrow, deep with them. I will, my Harriet. Helena! <laughs> Adieu! As you unto him, Demetrius Stokes unto you. How happy some uh, and others some can be. When Athens I am thought just as fair as she. But what of that Demetrius thinks not so? He knows all but he do know. And as he errs on Hermia's eyes, so I admiring of his qualities. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, and he laid that oath he was only mine. Shall the woods tomorrow night pursue her, and if for this intelligence I have thanks, it is but dear expense. Her eye mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. <laughs> Is all our company here? You are best call them generally, man by man, according to the script. Here's a scroll of every man's name who is thought fit through all of Athens to play in our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Wins, say what the play treats on. Then call the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Hylas and Thisbe. Very well. 
very good piece of work, I assure you, and a merry. Now, good Peter Prince, pull forth the names of the actors by the scroll, master, spread yourself. Answer as I call you, uh, Nick Bottom the Weaver. Ready! You Name more pie and four and proceed. You are to play Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover who kills himself most gallant for love. That will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. Yes. <coughs> Francis Root, <laughs> the bellows. Here we go. You are to take Bisbee on you. What is this, be a wandering knight? <laughs> a knight whom Pyramus must love. And I may hide my face, let me play this be too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. This me, this me, oh, Pyramus, my lover dear, thy this be dear and lady dear. No, no, no. You are to play Pyramus. And this be is you, Flinter. Well, proceed. Uh, Robin Starbling, the Taylor. Uh, Taylor. Prince. You are this bit's mother, a uh, Tom Snap Tinker. Yeah, Peter Quince. Uh, his father, I this bit's father, and Snoke the Joiner, the Lion's part. And here is a maid it. Have you the Lion's part written? Pray you if it be, give it me, for I must now study. You must do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the Lion too. <laughs> I will roar that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the Duke say, Let him roar again! Let him roar again! No, no, no. You could play no but, but Pyramus, a sweet faced man, a proper man as one would see on a summer's day, a sweet, gentleman like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus! Well, I will undertake it. Masters, here are your parts. And I am to entreat you, desire you, and request you to con them by tomorrow night, and to meet in the palace wood a, a mile without the town, and there we shall rehearse. For if we meet in the city, we will be dogged by company and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draw up a bill of properties that this play wants. I pray you, they all me not. We will meet. And then we, there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Oh, you take pains, be perfect. Adieu! <laughs> At the Duke's Oak we meet. Enough! Hold. Cut both strings. <laughs> <laughs> Swifter than the moon's sphere. I must serve my fairy queen. To do all orbs upon the green, I must go seek some dewdrops here. Hang a pearl in every cow sleep's ear. Farewell, thou lord of spirits. I'll be gone. Our queen and all her elves come here and not. The king doth keep his revels here tonight to heed the queen come not within his sight, but over on his passing bell and wrath that she, as her attendant, had the lovely voice gone from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling, and jealous Oberon would have that child night of his chain to chase the forest wild. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? How do I mistake your shape of making quite? Are you that shrewd and navy sprite called Robin Goodfellow? Not. How speaketh the right? I am that merry wonder of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile. When I a bat and being fed horse beguiled, nay, in likeness of a filly fowl, and, and sometimes I lurk in a gossip's bowl, in very likeness of a roasted crab. And then when she drink, when she drinks against her lips, I bob and down her with a dewlap or the ale. The wisest aunt telling the saddest tale. Sometimes mistaketh me for a three foot stool. And still I throw up up and down double she a tail and cries and falls into a cough and then the whole choir put their hands on their hips and laugh. <laughs> and, and then they swear 
A merry hour was never wasted there, but rude fairy, here comes Oberon. And here, my master, will that be what you <clears throat> Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. Ah, oh, jealous Oberon. Very skip hence, I have forsworn his bed and company. Tarry, rash wanton, am I not thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. <laughs> but I do know when thou hast stolen away from fairyland, and in the shape of Corin sat all day, playing your pipes of corn and versing love to amorous Philida. Why art thou here, come from the fairest lands of India, but that for suit the bouncing Amazon, your busked mistress and your warrior love to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou? For shame, Titania, glance at my credit with a biter, knowing I know thy love to Theseus. Didst thou not lead him through the glimmering night from Perigenia, whom he ravished, <laughs> and make him with fair aid did break his faith, with Ariadne and Antiope. Oh, these are the forgeries of jealousy. And never since the middle summer of spring met we on hill or dale or forest or mead or by paving fountain or by rushy brook or by the beached margin of the sea to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind but with thy brawl for us despoiled our sport. Do you end it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross an Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. <laughs> Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the boy of me. His mother was a votress of my order, and in the spiced Indian air by night, full often had she sat by me and gossiped by my side, and watched by Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood. When we did love to see how the wind conceive, and she with swimming and with pretty gait following, her womb then rich with my young squire, would imitate and dance upon the land to fetch me trifles and return again, rich with merchandise as from a voyage. But she, being mortal, of the child did die, and for her sake do I rear up the boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? But you still after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently join in our rounds and see our moonlight revels go with us, if not, shall me, and I will spare your hope. Ah, give me that boy and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies, away! We shall try downright in my longest day. Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle pup, come hither. Thou remember since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid with on a, on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song, and certain stars shot madly from their orbits to hear the sea maid's music. I remember. That very time I saw that thou couldst not fly in between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid, all armed, a certain aim he took, and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow, as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. But I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft quenched by the chaste beam of the watery moon. And the imperial votaress passed on in main meditation, fancy free. Yet, marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell, it fell upon a little western flower before milk white now purple with love's wound, and maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me that flower. The herb I showed thee once, the juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid, will make all man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. <laughs> Fetch me that flower. And be thou here again, ere the Leviathan can swim a league. I'll, um, I'll, I'll put a girl around the earth in 40 minutes. 
having one's this juice. I'll watch Titania when she is asleep. I'll drop the liquor of it in her eyes. <laughs> the next thing that she waking looks upon, be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, or meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. <laughs> I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is my Sandra and fair Hermia? Thou told me they were going into this wood, and here I am, woe within this wood, and I cannot leave my Hermia. So get thee gone, and follow me no more. Oh, but you draw me, you hard-hearted adamant! Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I in pain as true tell you I cannot, nor I will not love you? Oh, and even for that I love you the more. I am your spaniel and Demetrius. The more you beat me, the more I will fall on you. Use me as your spaniel, spur me, strike me, defend me. Only give me leave. Unworthy as I am in your company, what worse a place can I beg in your love? And yet a place of high respect with me than to be used as you use your dog. I'm tempted too much by the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I look on thee. your modesty too much, to run from the city and commit yourself to the hands of one who loves you not. I'll run from thee and hide thee in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. But the wild is half not such a heart as you. Please, I cannot stay thy question. Just let me go. And if thou follow me, do not believe I will do thee mischief in the woods. Why, in a temple, in a town, in a field, you do me mischief! Why, Demetrius? <laughs> Your wrongs do put a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight love as men may do. We should be wooed and we're not made to woo. I'll follow thee and make heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he do, do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he will seek thy love. Ah, hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. I pray thee, give it me. There it is. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows. There sleeps Titania sometime of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And there the snake throws her enamelled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. <laughs> With the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it, and seek through this grove. A fair Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Effect it with some care, that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And look who meet me ere the first cock crow. Be not, my lord, your servant will do so. A round of the fairy song. Seek me now asleep. Then to your offices and let me rest. <laughs> Tarry for the comfort of the day. 
Be it so, find you out of bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. Oh, one turf shall serve as a pillow for us both. One heart, one bed, two bosoms, and one strop. Thy sons are riddles very prettily, but gentle friend, for love and courtesy, lie further off in human modesty. Amen, amen. To that fair prayer say I, and end life when I end loyalty. Here is my bed. Sleep, give him all his rest. With half that wish, the wish his eyes have confessed. Through the forest I had gone, but Athenian found I none. On whose eyes I might approve this flower's force in stirring love. Just night and silence. Fifty shades of Athenian. Who is here? <laughs> Weeds of Athens he doth wear. This is he, my master said, despised the Athenian maiden. And here the maiden, sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Oh, pretty soul. She durst not lie near this lap love, this kill courtesy. Churl upon mine eyes I do throw all the power this charm doth owe. When thou wakest, let thou see what your true love means. Eh, so awake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. <laughs> Demetrius! I charge thee, hence do not want me thus. Oh, shalt thou darkly leave me, do not so! Stay, lest on thy peril I alone will go. I am out of breath in this fond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. <laughs> oh, but who is that? Lysander on the ground? Dead? Alive? Oh, I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, good sir, if you live. Oh, quick! <laughs> and run through fire, I will, for thy sweet sake. Transparent Helena, nature shows art. That Whoa! through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Not change a raven for a dove. When was I to this keen mockery born? And when in your hand did I deserve this scorn? Oh, that a lady of one man refused should all another be abused. She sees not Hermia. Hermia sleeps thou there, and never mayst thou come thy hand near. And all my love, and just as your love and might, to honour Helena and to be her knight. <laughs> Another prologue must be written to say that she is not a lion. 
two hard things. That is to bring moonshine into the chamber, for Pyramus and Thisbe met by moonlight. Does the moonshine nightly play our play? A calendar! A calendar! Look at the oven! Find out moonshine! Find out moonshine! Yes, it does shine that night. Well then, may you leave a casement of the great chamber window where we play open, and the moon may shine in at the casement. That is, uh, we must have a wall in the great chamber for Pyramus and Thisbe set the story. It's talk through a chink in the wall. It can never bring in a wall. <laughs> What's the you, Bottom? Some man or other must present the wall. And let him have some plaster or some loam or some rough cast about him to signify wall. And let him hold his fingers thus, and, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. That may be, then all is well. Now, come sit down, every mother's son, and uh, let us rehearse our parts. Now, uh, Pyramus, you start, and when you've spoken your speech, retire to the break in our retiring house, and so every one of you according to his cue. What hempen homespuns have you swaggering here, so near the cradle of the fairy queen? Is it a play toward? I'll be an auditor, an actor too, perhaps, if I see cause. There must speak, this be, stand off. Jewels from the deep well, thou oppressive flowers dost 
sleep. And I shall change your mortal grossness so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. <laughs> Come, tie up my love tongue, bring it silently. I wonder if Titania be awake, <laughs> then what it was that next came in her eye, which she must dote on in extremity. <laughs> ah, here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? What night rule now at this haunted grove? <laughs> my mistress with a monster is in love. <laughs> Near to her place and concentrate bow while she was in her dull and sleeping hour. <laughs> a crew of patches, rude mechanicals, were met together to rehearse a play intended for great Theseus's nuptial day. This one, the thick skinned shallowest of their barren sort, who Pinamus presented in their sport. An ass's knoll I fixed on his head. Anon, his this be must be answered, and forth mine when it comes. When they spy him, as wild geese to the creeping owl as fly, I led them on in this distracted fear, and loved sweet Pyramus translated there. <laughs> <laughs> when in this moment, so it came to pass, Titania waked and straight away loved an ass. <laughs> <laughs> I could devise. But <clears throat> hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that is finished too, and the Athenian maiden by his side, so when he woke, of course she must be eyed. <laughs> Stand close, this is the same Athenian. Uh, this is the woman, but not this the man. Oh, why rebuke you him that loves you so? Lay your bit of breath to your bitter foe. Now I but try that I should use thee worse, but thou, Athen, hast given me cause to curse. It cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. So, so should a murderer look so dead, so grim. So should the murderer look, and so should I, pierce through the heart with your stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, is as bright and as clear as yon Venus in her glimmering sphere. <laughs> what is this to my life's wonder? Where is he? Oh, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I would rather give his carcass to my hands. Dog out, Kerr, thou drive him past the bounds and make his patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth be never numbered among men. You spread your passion with a misprised mood. I am not guilty of my sanders blood, nor is he dead, for that I can tell. Oh, I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what would I get to them? A privilege never to see me more, and from thy hated presence part I so. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. Ah, there is no following her in this fierce vein. Therefore, here a while I will remain. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the love juice on a true love's side. Then fate rules that one man holding troth and learn a million fails, compounding oath upon oath. Mm. About this would go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find. All fancy six she is, and pale of cheer, with sighs of love, which costs the fresh blood dear. By some illusion, see thou bring her here, I'll charm his eyes against you your fear. I go, I go, see how I go, swifter than an arrow from a dark bow. Now I love this purple dye, hit by Cupid's arch and eye, seeking the of his eye. When his true love he doth espy, let her shine as glorious by, as the Venus of the Star, <laughs> where you are about to do. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Captain, of our fairy band, Helena is placed at hand, and the youth mistook by me, bleeding for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond pageant see? Thought, what fools these mortals be? Stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then will two at once rue one. This must needs be sport alone. Now these things do best please me. At the ball for pop, first, 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 Preposterously. <laughs> Why should you think I will have scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. Look, when I vow, I weep. Oh. And vow so forth in the nativity, all truth to be. Why do these things 
me seem scorn to you, bearing the badge of faith to prove them true. Oh, you do advance your cunning more and more. These vows were Hermia's. Will you not give to her earth? I had no judgment but to her, I swore. Nor none in my mind. Now will you give to her earth? Demetrius loves Hermia, and he loves not you. Oh, Helena, oh, yes, the perfect nymph divine. To what my love shall I compare thy line? Crystal is my life, I show. Those lips, those kissing cherries, tempting me grow. <laughs> between 
between our statures. She hath urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage, her height, forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And I have grown so high in his esteem, because I am so dwarfish and so low. How low am I, thou painted maple? Speak! How low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails come reach her. Here will rest me. 
Come now, gentle day. Oh, God, my God, it's so nuts. And my thee, thou darest, for well I got thou rust away, shifting every place, and darest not stand nor look me in the face. Where art thou now? Look at that. Here. Nay, then thou must box me. And if ever I thy face by daylight see, oh, now go, faintness constraineth me, while I measure up my length from this cold bed, and by day's approach love to be visited.
and in a wood of Crete they bathe the bear with hounds of Sparta. Never did I hear! My hounds are proud of the Spartan kind. Judge when you hear. But soft? What nymphs are these? Good morning, friends! <laughs> Safe Valentine's is past. Begin these woodbirds, but to couple now. Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. I come this gentle concord in the world, and hatred is so far from jealousy. To sleep by hate and fear no enmity. My lord, I shall reply, amazingly. Half asleep and half waking, but as yet I cannot truly say how we came to these woods, but, but as I think, for truly will I speak, and but me, me think me it is so. Me and the hermit came with her to the woods to be away from Athens. Our intent was to be from the out of the peril of the Athenian law. My lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth. But this is their purpose hither to this wood, and I in fury hither followed them, and Helen in fancy following me. But, good lord, I know not by what power, but by some power that it is, that my love for Hermia is melted as snow. The object and the pleasure of my nine is only Helena. To her, my lord, I was betrothed ere I saw Hermia. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. For in the temple, by and by, these couples shall eternally be knit. Away to Athens, three and three. We'll hold a feast of great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. Are we awake? It seems that when we sleep, we dream. Did the Duke just bid us to follow? He did just bid us to follow to the temple. Then we must be awake. Let us go. And by the way, let us recount our dreams. <laughs> fantasies that apprehend, more than core reason ever comprehends. But all the story the night told over, and all their minds transfigured so together, more witness it than fancy's images, and grows to something of great constancy, but howsoever strange and admirable. <laughs> it come the lovers, full of joy and mirth, joy gentle friends, joy and fresh days of love, accompany your hearts. <laughs> more than to us, 
Wait in your royal walks. Pure lord. Your bed. <laughs> but come, what masks, what dances shall we have to wear away the long age of three hours between our after supper and bedtime? <laughs> Where is our usual manager of mirth? What revels are in hand? Is there no play to ease the anguish of a torturing hour? Call Philostrate! Offend, it is with our good will that you should think we come not to offend, but with good will to show our simple skill that is the true beginning of our end. Consider then that we come but in despite. We do not come in mining to contest you. The truth is, all for your delight, we are not here. That you should here repent you. The actors are at hand, and by their show, you shall know all that you are like to know. <laughs> Fellow does not stand upon point. Yeah, with his bow like, like a rough cold. He knows not to stop. <laughs> Perchance you wonder at this show, but wander on till truth make all things pain. This man is pinnabous if truth be. <laughs> <laughs> now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by the sun of York. Steady and spent. <laughs> <laughs> Beauteous, beauteous, <laughs> beauteous lady, this be, tis certain, this man with lime and rough calf does present war, <laughs> which while war did these two lovers under to speak through a change in lovers' war and next to the man. <laughs> this man with Landlord Bush and Scorn presented Moonshine. For by which Moonshine did our lovers score to meet at Ninus Tomb. <laughs> and there, there, Tomb. This grisly beast which lion I. <laughs> Which lion hide my name, if this be first come by night, did a fright. <laughs> and did scare away or rather did a fright. And as she <laughs> and as she fled. Oh Lord. And man did bore, which lion, vile li lion, bloody <laughs> mouth did stain. And anon comes Perimus, sweet you and all. And finds his trust beat this his mantle slain. How it blade, with bloody blameful blade, he bravely broached his falling bloody breast. <laughs> 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 Ha, ha, ha. 
on the death of a dear friend, would go and make a man look sad. Beshrew my heart, but I pity the man. Wherefore, nature, didst thou lion's frame? For lion vile happier, deflowered, my dear. <laughs> which is, which was the fairest dame that ever lived. That loved, that like, that looked with cheer. Out tears confound. Out sword and wound the pack of Pyramus. I, thy left pack, where heart doth hop. <laughs> thus die I. Thus, thus, thus. Oh. <laughs> now I am dead. Now I am fled. Thank you. 